The main reason most 3D artists fail is because they suck in presentation. In this video I'll show you an easy formula you can follow to consistently create good renders. Let's go! Now presentation or in our case rendering is necessary to your success. The way you showcase your models is how you'll be judged by your friends but more importantly your future employers. Good news is that presentation is easy to master once you know how to approach it. So in this video we're going to be talking about five stages of rendering. Number one is setting a backdrop. Number two is camera angle and settings. Number three is light setup. Number four is render settings and number five is editing. You need all five. So before before we get started, I have a gift for you. It's our free hard surface jumpstart course. It will provide you with solid foundations for Blender hard surface and teach you much about rendering process and presentation in step-by-step -step tutorials. It's concise and designed specifically for Blender beginners. It already helped nearly 60,000 people. The link is in the video description. Like I said, it's free. Now back to rendering. So number one, backdrop. See, backdrop is crucial but it's also simple to set up so don't worry i often use something we call infinite backdrop which is essentially a plane that curves upward with a gentle bevel creating an illusion of an infinite horizon just add a simple bsdf mat slide metallic value to zero and make it either bright or dark. Now the key here is that it has to contrast with the model in order to create background separation so the outline of the model is clearly visible. This will help you to sell the design language of your model much more easily. You could also introduce another texture to your background as I do here in this image by using one of our mats from the add-on material works. Now don't oversize the background, try to limit it to camera's field of view. Excessive backdrop can block the light making your scene darker. Now let me give you a few pro tips here. Do not have your background compete with the model. I see this mistake being done over and over in renders. Backdrop is the seasoning not the core dish. Go easy on textures and patterns because they can very easily distract the viewer from the model. And there you go, your background is done. Now stage number two, camera angle and settings. While this step requires some expertise, here are some basic tips for you to get you started. So first of all I suggest you go online, get the machine tools add-on for Blender and install it. Once you install it, go to preferences and enable view spy on the machine add-ons. All right, you can get machine tools for free on Gumroad and the link is in the video description. Next, adjust a view in a 3D viewport and when you can see the entire model, press page down on a keyboard and add camera from view. Press page down again and lock it to view. This will allow you to adjust the camera's perspective. Click on the model and then fine tune the camera position. A key to good composition is understanding negative space, which basically is the space around the model. The best way to frame well is by offsetting items in the composition. Easy way to visualize this is by applying something we call rule of thirds, or in other words, offsetting a subject on one of the third of the image. Imagine four lines slicing the image and creating four intersections. Each of these intersections falls on the third of the frame. Simply align the model with one of the four intersection points and you're halfway there. In our example, we'll position the model to the left, leaving ample negative space to the right. Now, all we need is something to off balance the model on the other side. It could be a logo or a copy of the same model shown from a different angle, like for example in this image. This will ensure that the visual weight in the image is balanced across the frame. Next tip I'll give you concerns camera angle and focal length. And that's important, so focus. Now I prefer a longer focal length which compresses the view and the reason why I'll explain in a minute. Another trick that you can use is lower the camera angle which will immerse the viewer into the model's world. This trick is very often used in child and animal photography. So we're basically entering their world by lowering the camera angle, right? Now let's go back to the focal length because it's connected. So our eyes have 50 millimeter lens built in. That's how we see the world, it gets 50 millimeter lens. Now by adjusting the focal length to let's say 135, which is a long telephoto lens, which will compress the view and lowering the angle, you present a view that's drastically different from what we can see with a naked eye, which makes the image more unique 
unique and more intriguing and that's the trick so this should cover the camera angle and focal length now step number three is going to be light setup so with our scene ready let's introduce some light to it now i want you to switch to render view and activate cycled render engine also if you have a graphics card enable gpu compute under render settings it will work faster now we need to add an hdri through the node setup so go to preferences and enable blender add-on called node wrangler it enables shortcuts in the node editor now navigate to shader editors tab shift to the world settings select the background node and press ctrl t now all we need is an hdri image so i recommend starting with a simple one and the easiest to control is an HDRI with diffused light, which is basically a light that's omnidirectional, like on a cloudy day, and produces soft, subtle shadows. We'll use an HDRI from polyheaven.com called Abandoned Slipaway. A 4K resolution is fine. So download to your PC and add it through the node group inside of the shader editor. Now, in the 3D viewport, enter the camera view by pressing numpad 0. And if you don't have numpad, go to preferences and enable emulate numpad under input. And adjust the HDRI angle on the Z axis to align the light source with the camera perspective. So here I want you to aim for a 45 to 90 degree angle from the camera's direction for depth and interest. So let me just help you visualize this, okay? If I'm looking straight through the camera lens, right, the light should be falling 45 to 90 degrees angle, all right? The steeper the angle, the more dramatic shadows, the better the image, right? That's how I sunset and sunrise look so cool because the angle is so steep, all right? Next, what I want you to do is adjust the HDRI strength, ensuring that the scene isn't too dark. Shadows shouldn't be pure black, so you know, check it out and adjust if you need to. And finally, disable the HDRI visibility in the render stop under film. So now if one side of the model is too dark, you can add something we call a reflector. It's nothing more but a plane with a non-metallic BSDF mat added to it. All you need to do is angle it so it reflects the light back onto the model from the other side. You can adjust the strength of the reflected light by lightening or darkening the color value on the BSDF mat. So that's all about light setup. It's really easy and that should give you, you know, results in 90, 95% of your images. Number four is gonna be render settings and this step is pretty straightforward. Go to render tab and set samples to 300. More maybe needed for ArcVis, but in, you know, regular images, 300 is fine. Activate the noise, that's really important, okay? For output resolution, I often choose 2560 by 1440, which is 16 by 9 ratio, so it gives me more cinematic feel, okay? I prefer rendering in TIFF, 16 bit over JPEG because it's simply richer in data. Under performance, select your tile size. 2048 is by default, but it may vary depending on your hardware. So just try different settings. On the preferences, you can also set rendering to optics, which might accelerate the rendering process. So, you know, if that works for you, turn it on. If it doesn't, leave it on default. Also make sure that you select only GPU on the system in preferences. Selecting both GPU and CPU usually slow things down and it doesn't matter what kind of machine you're using. And number five, editing. This process can be completed very quickly. Remember, less is more. I typically use Camera Raw to increase clarity and open some shadows to compensate for clarity, darkening the black tones. You can then add curve adjustment layer and fine-tune contrast or even add colors through curves. For this, I prefer to use paid plugin called Color Effects Pro from Nick Collection, specifically the Pro Contrast and cross-processing filters. If you like, you can add a vignette via Camera Raw filter or Color Effects Pro. Vignettes are quite nice and they are great for helping to pull the eyes inside of the image because they're darkening the outside and the inside is brighter, okay? Now, lastly, for displaying on the web, you want to resize the image to 2048 on the longest edge and save it as RGBS JPEG. And there you have it, your render is ready. Now last tip, for efficiency, clear the scene in Blender and remove everything from the 3D viewport. And now we can save these Blender settings as the default. Next time you open Blender, everything will be set and ready to go, so you don't have to repeat all these steps. You simply grab your model, add a camera, add a background, 
and you're good to go. So these are all the steps you need to know to create decent renders. Now, if you're interested, there is a link to our Discord in the video description. You can go there. There's over 3,000 people over there and you can very easily get feedback on your renders. There is even a tab or chat called Share Your Work. It's a fantastic place to exchange your renders and, you know, get some feedback and basically improve. So link is in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.